Yes, that is right. Welcome, everybody, on in to the Saturday Night Network for another edition of SNL Stories. And this time, we have a part two for you because we are back with the legendary Bobby Moynihan on the podcast tonight. I'm so excited to get to speak to him. Of course, we are presented by LateNighter.com, so appreciate all of our friends over there. You got to check out that website. And we have some great co-hosts on the show tonight. So let's bring in James Stevens Jr. James, how are you? I am great because we are going to be talking to one of the fan favorites, ranks one of the highest on on the program. Uh, so how could I not be doing great, John? It's going to be, uh, this is interview number two with one of my favorite people on the planet. Absolutely. Yeah. If you if you don't know, we did a ranking of the greatest cast members of all time, and uh, he was ranked very high up on that list when we did that countdown in the fall. So I'm excited to talk to him in just a minute, but we got to bring in uh, Andrew Haskell to the podcast as well. Haskell, I know you're very excited to be here today. I was so excited. Uh, uh, apparently, this Bobby guy was on SNL. He was actually on the real show. Uh, I was unfamiliar uh, and then I watched some stuff this week and so, no, I'm just kidding. I'm acting like I was not completely gushing and so excited to do this. Uh, I, Bobby, I grew up watching you and that entire cast in that era. I've talked about it pretty much every second that I've been on this podcast. So, so excited to be a part of this tonight. Uh, thank you for having me. Oh, hi. Yeah. How does it make you feel when, when somebody tells you they, they grew up with you? I want to, at some point, I just want to switch our names so people don't know if it's me or you. Because, I mean, if without a beard, I'm, we're the same person. <laughs> Wait, say that again. Say that again, Tim. Yeah, I was, was going to say, how does it make you feel when uh, somebody says, I grew up watching you? <laughs> uh, it's insane. That's crazy. Yeah, that that sentence is nuts. Because now, now I'm in the, tw- you know, I'm I'm almost dead. And I'm in the twilight <laughs> of my years. And, uh, and, uh... <laughs> Well, we're we're so pleased uh, to have you back on the show tonight. So, uh, awesome. so much to get it, so much to get into with you tonight. Um, I do want to ask you off the bat. So, uh, in the real time right now, we just had Josh Brolin return to host the show for the third time. Not familiar. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he hosted twice. Well, you were a cast oh, member. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And- yeah, and the sentiment really was like uh, people were like, "Oh yeah, he hosted twice. That's crazy." Uh, but looking back now and seeing him perform this last week, I think he's one of the better hosts that I've seen in a while. Like, can you give me some background on your experience with Josh Brolin? Because I think everybody was surprised at how underrated of a host he was and how great of an episode we just saw. Uh, one hundred percent. When the second you brought it up, I was you, we were joking around, but then immediately I remember he holds a very fond memory, couple very fond memories for me as a as a host. Uh, number one, because uh, I don't know if I told this story the last time I was on, or I would. I know I've told this story before. There's a famous moment where during in between dress and air, I don't know if you know the famous sket where fart face. It was called. Uh, Fart- we, we love Farface here. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Forte, Bill, and and uh, and Josh Brolin, where it's just like he keeps calling him Fartface over and over again, and it kind of like famously like kind of tanked, and they just kept going. Like it was it was hilarious, but like it's it's absolutely hilarious of a sketch. But in between dress and air, it just gave us all the moment where in a moment of very tense silence in between dress and air, where you're waiting to hear of just like. 10 seconds of silence and then Lauren just went we have a boom shadow on fart face (laughs) (laughs) and uh, it was one of the greatest one of the greatest moments of my life Uh, (laughs) I don't think I've ever heard that (laughs) it's an amazing story it was just it was just uh, just the way he said it it was it was it broke the tension it was absolutely fantastic um (laughs) The driest read ever. He's hilarious. And it was wonderful. Um, uh, I remember that. I remember he was in this sketch. Like, I remember being in a sketch. I think it aired where Josh Brolin just kept, like, the whole thing was, it was an office. He was trying to get us to go outside and, like, have the meeting outside. And his whole thing was like, you know, like, remember when we were in school and we used to have class outside? Like, let's go outside. It's fall. We can go look at the the, the buttery rusts. All the different colors, the 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 golds and the, and he just kept saying like buttery rusts over and over again. It was super weird, but I loved it. Uh, 
and uh, he was super funny. He was, I think it was like the Sarah Palin episode or like, yeah. Do you remember who wrote that fall foliage sketch? I, th- I'm assuming like the second you said that I went, I'm assuming James Anderson and, okay. and <laughs> Ken Sublette, I'm guessing maybe yeah. Rob Klein. I don't, I'm not sure though. One of those jo- Josh Brolin ones, I, I have to just uh, slow motion hallway was mm-hmm. is 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 something that i just always go back to i might be on a i'm playing it on that one but funny no, it's, it's great Amazing. bobby what are the vibes like when you have a returning host that you know like the the last time they host was really good you know that they're game for it like what are those vibes when you get that announcement like that they're coming in that week does it change that week or is it all always just kind of the same vibes yeah, no, you get excited with someone like him. You know, it's going to be a good time. You know, it's going to be. He's going to be down for whatever, and you're going to. He's going to let you score and you're going to let him score. It, it's He's a good guy to have come back. Was there anybody like in your time on the show who would have been on your short list of like, man, I really wish they were in here two or three more times because we just had fun and it just never worked out that they were back. I mean, Adam Driver for me. Mm. Sigourney Weaver. <laughs> was fun. Seth Rogen. Yeah. Those some good ones. Yeah. Yeah, James. So, yeah, last time we we talked about your origin story, kind of like how you got cast on the show and all that kind of stuff. And, and I think you alluded to, we knew this about you, that you – grew up loving SNL, uh, but we didn't really talk very much about that. So just curious, you know, when did you start following the show and who was your favorite cast members and, and, and kind of what, what got you into the show? Did you watch it uh, at a certain age level, you know, your parents into it? How, how did that happen? Um, I don't know. I wasn't through my parents. I think I just found it through comedy and like just in, and, and, I, I just it being, you know, it being a thing and it being around. Uh, I came in, I'm guessing, like Farley, you know, like that era. That was my definitely my where where I came in, like my high school. You know, I think Lauren said it's a, the whole thing is whoever it is in high school when you're in high school is your cast. So I think that was probably mine. But I I remember going and like, I think my real introduction was probably like the 25th anniversary. Yeah. Like, or something like that. Like, it was like a weird, like retrospective where like, I got, like, I think it was like that. It's so interesting, Bobby, that you say that because there's several of us who I, I think, I'm a little older, I think, if, if I'm not mistaken. And for me, it was the 15th anniversary that I remembered that coming on, that special coming on and just put taping it and going back and watching it and then wanting to kind of catch up and then just kind of watching every show. Every, so for you, it was the 25th. And, you know, you mentioned the Farley and that cast. Was 50th there? 50th hasn't happened yet. The 50th is like next year. I know. I know. You're going to be there, right? I Well, who knows? I hope. We'll see. <laughs> I'll be I'll be outside dressed as drunk uncle crying. <laughs> but was there with the Farley and, and that whole cast, was there a certain sketch or something that you gravitated to or that you know watched all the time or you made sure your friends saw? I mean, or- I remember like I mean like now that now that I'm going back, like that I think is my true first memory is like re- listening to a recording on the bus of like chopping broccoli and and you know uh Belushi is Beethoven, but really Ray Charles, you know, uh, Hot Tub, James Brown, Eddie Murphy, you know, like that, that kind of stuff. But then also like Adam Sandler's comedy CD in high school, like definitely like I got suspended or I got almost expelled from high school for playing. Uh, his You're all going to laugh at you. The, <laughs> yeah. Playing the uh, that principal's announcement over our loudspeaker. Like it was oh, God. I got in trouble for that. That's great because, I mean, look, a lot of the <laughs> listeners here, they can relate to you being a fan of the show and you are the one that ended up getting onto the show, but it's still fascinating to hear how you fell in love with it and why you were such a big fan in the first place. So uh, thanks for sharing that. No, 
Yeah, Bobby, I'd love to get into some of the sketches we didn't get to talk to you about last time, ones that I think a lot of the fans have enjoyed over the years and they want to hear some stories about. So uh, one of the ones I have on my list is you played a fan, a, a hockey fan, and then a little Fockers fan named Keith. Do you remember this? This is from the Bradley Cooper episode in 34 and the Robert De Niro episode in 36. <laughs> <laughs> what was that one like? Um. I I remember it was like I think it was like I saw like a kid on Jimmy Kimmel or like there was some little kid that was or it was like yeah I think it was like on Jimmy Kimmel they asked some kid like if it was okay to curse or he kept like asking off camera if it was like can I curse or something like that? I I forget what it was it was just some little kid that went viral for asking if he could curse and we were talking about it over and over and started just saying, wouldn't it be funny if he just didn't give a shit about the coolest person in the room kind of thing? <laughs> and uh, uh, that I think it was that was the first one was the Bradley Cooper one was just like we uh, we thought it would be funny if it was like he got to go backstage and the star hockey player. He was just like, oh, what's up, man? Like, don't care. Oh, the guy who cleans the pads? Like, awesome. <laughs> I think we just thought that was funny and then brought it back. And I think like that's the more people remember that one more, the Meet the Fockers one. And then we did one with, um, or I wrote one for Elton John. Okay. Where uh, when Elton John hosted, I wrote one of those for Elton John, and Elton John was like, "No, I don't like this kid. No." <laughs> That's one I wish not. I saw for sure. Yeah, he uh, was like, "I don't find it funny that this kid doesn't like me. Forget it." <laughs> I think it's actually it's a great SNL character that I wish uh, you had done more on the show. So I'm glad to hear that somewhere in another universe, this third third iteration exists. Do you remember who you were? I mean, on that's those most of my characters. Is the third one, not, <laughs> right. yeah. Do you remember who you worked on those sketches with, or it was just coming from you? The Keith ones. I I wish I wear. I think it was probably those. Sound like maybe more like Rob Klein and John Solomon, maybe. Brian cool. Tucker was probably involved in some capacity or Colin Jones. I for, I forget. I I, I forget. No it all melds together at some point. We always love to give it up, you know, to the to the writers. Of course, is why we always ask that. You know, John's great. Oh, the greatest, the greatest. Yeah. Uh, but you know, let's be real. Summer is like the spring break of seasons. So, of <laughs> course, I want to ask you about uh, everybody's favorite Jersey Shore uh, character, um, a Snooky. So I think you did about five times, if I'm not mistaken. How did this, whose idea was, okay, let's, let's paint Bobby and make this happen. <laughs> um, I remember just flipping through the channels and seeing that clip of her getting whacked in the face and was just like, oh boy. And uh, was like, well, I gotta, I gotta do something about, about this show. And it just hit really hard. But I, I think I remember being like, I remember, I do remember Lauren being like, it is way too much makeup. And I'm like, it's not. That's and he was funny. like, it's way too much orange. And I'm like, it's not, trust me. And I remember there was talk about like needing to shave my chest. And I was just like, we don't need to like, no, like it's, it's, I was like, going to ask you about that. because <laughs> I, I think that like makes it even better. Right. I, I just remember being like, I think I don't think we need to. I don't think it's a thing. I don't think we need to worry about it. And like we we didn't. We didn't. Like no one brought it up. Like, I mean, like if anything, someone went like, it's funny that you got chest hair like once or twice. But like <laughs> I, I think that that's yeah, people I, I know people have mentioned, at the time. No one said anything. people have mentioned that being part of the gag and it being funny. Did you get oranger as it went on? <laughs> I think it was the opposite. I think you started out really orange and was then got it, like, was it? yeah, yeah. I think I started to lose the battle towards the end. Like Lauren was like, no, no, less. I also think maybe like I might have gotten just sick of it, and and been like, no, no, no. There's also like it'll be funny. Like I'll, I'll, I'll like a sketch will come up somewhere and I'll see it and I'll see that the inside of my ears and my knuckles are orange. And I'm like, Oh, I must've done Snooky that night. <laughs> right. I can only, did like, you ever in meet some other Snooki? sketch? 
Yeah, I, I did a whole um, thing with her for um, uh, New Year's Eve at MTV Movie Awards, <laughs> or or New either the New Year's Eve or the movie. Well, some something MTV. What was that like? Um, it was great. It was at nine o'clock in the morning. We did shots. Uh, I was dressed as her. It was insane. It was it was nuts. She was great. She was she was snooky. She was exactly who she is. It was it was wonderful. She tried to. She tried to just get me to get as hammered as I could. And I was like, I got to go to like work after this. I... <laughs> in that situation, Bobby, do you just go in unapologetically? Like, listen, I play you on SNL. I'm going to play you. Or do you walk in like, okay, I'm, I'm sorry for this. I, I, I didn't have like many encounters where I portrayed somebody in a poor light. Thank goodness. But like there was a moment where I was like, oh my god! She walked in the room. She had no clue who I was. She shook my hand. She was like, oh, you're the guy that does me. Okay, like I wasn't dressed as her yet, so she didn't. And then like when she saw it was me, she that was like it. She got pictures. She did her job. She did her shots, and she went home. She snooky man. She don't. <laughs> I was in her way. <laughs> it was. She was great. She was absolutely wonderful in the sense of like she was snooky. She is where she is because she is who she is. You did that first, like you did that very early on. I feel like in the run of like Jersey Shore is like, is Lauren, like, I know we're going back over a decade from when it started, but is he so incredibly tapped in? Or is there a moment where you have to go in and, and when you're pitching, be like, uh, there's this, there's this like reality star and we have to touch upon it. I think the only one, like when you said that, what, it reminds me of is the fur the very first my first episode guy fietti happened to be in the audience if you go back the michael phelps monologue guy fietti is in the front row of the audience and he doesn't say anything and it's confusing now because he's guy fietti but uh, <laughs> uh but he was just there in the audience as a fan on my first episode and like he came up to me at the after party and was like, I'm the guy from TV. Like this is nuts. And like, I love, I'm a big fan of the show. And John Solomon was like, you got to play this guy. And we wrote something and did it. And Lauren kind of didn't know who he was. And then all of a sudden he was in the Fridays, like national Fridays commercials. And it was in all the cabs in New York city. And Lauren was like, you could play guy for <laughs> <laughs> It was like, after he saw him in the cab, he was like, I get it. Yeah, and you ended up like doing that, it a few times that, on the show. Yeah, that 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 I remember that like shift of like now I know who it is in pop culture, so you can do it. I mean, like Snooky was relatively like I mean, I think we helped in a in a in the in a capacity <laughs> like of of hitting while the iron was hot, like very early on with setting up Jersey Shore. But and to your know, point B about Bill's situation, I forgot Bill's situation. Yeah, that's true. Uh, with the with the abs, which was uh, great. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that Guy Fieri thing you're talking about in the Michael, in the Michael Phelps. Oh, okay, good to know. Um, the uh, the ep when you talk about Guy Fieri in the Michael Phelps episode, I always find those stories really fascinating because if you go back to like a lot of the original episodes of SNL, you can see like Steven St uh, Steven Spielberg in the audience and things like that. So for you, did you ever like come out on stage and you're like, oh wow, there's like somebody out there that I didn't expect, and it's just because it's SNL and anybody could be there at any point. No, I don't think so. I don't think I've ever like audience wise, like, oh, there's somebody in the audience, like, you know, like whatever. Like it was definitely like backstage and stuff. Right. Like, you would walk by Steven Spielberg or he would make a joke and you'd just be like, Well, that's a like that's that's right, Steve. Excuse me, I'm dressed as a giant baby right now. <laughs> like <laughs> or like <laughs> a lot of that. But uh I do remember the closest like the thing that you said is I remember being in funny enough. I remember being dressed as Snooky in uh, the church chat sketch with Dana, when Dana Carvey hosted and that was on home base and they just happened to sit my then girlfriend at the time and her best friend, like right, like maybe like four rows back in that, like, you know, monologue section and so I was just like dressed as Snooky, sitting three feet away from Dana Carvey and four feet away from my future wife, who I knew had just going like, 
in between every take going like, <laughs> can you believe this? Like, like that. I have a huge like sense memory of like being a fool and just being like, the entire, the entire, um, out of body experience almost. Yeah. I, all I kept thinking now is like the entire, um, control room can see what I'm doing because we're going off camera for live television, but everyone in the control room can see me going. Like, <laughs> my, my girl. I love like it. A child. Bobby, can I jump to a character that you kind of brought in no, towards Pascal, the, no. I'm just going to leave, actually. Okay. Uh, oh, bye. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. I'm just kidding. I um, like your bobblehead, by the way. Thank you. Thanks, man. I like uh, Crazy. I'm going to ask, um, what the hell was Riblet? And where did that come <laughs> exactly. from? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I wish there was some way I could just... And then pop up behind you. <laughs> pop up behind you dressed as rib- Riblet. Um, uh, <laughs> um, Riblet it literally was... Uh, my good, my best friend from college <laughs> calling me up one night when Che first started and was like, Che sucks. I could host this show better than him. And I was like, no, you can't. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, that's crazy. He's been on for one second. You're insane. And I told Che, like, I was just like, I got, like, my buddy is an idiot who thinks he could do Weekend Update. And like, we started joking around about it, and that's how Riblet came about. It was a guy trying to one up and do actual update jokes, and then like the end was just me being a weirdo and trying to do weird prop comedy. When you're doing Riblet and you're seeing, you know, yourself doing jokes on update, does the thought cross your mind of like, what if I was given update at some point? I mean, like it. I think it it crosses every person's mind, but like as as an SNL fan, but like not in reality. I also don't know if I would want that job or be good at it. Like the 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 amount of work you have to do, and oh, I'd rather be on it every other week. Were you ever on any short lists during any of the transitions? I I if if I was, I don't know about it, and I doubt it. Yeah, I mean, maybe they were like, and then Bobby comes flying in on wires, like, <laughs> but like, no, not like, and then Bobby hosts. No, I don't think so. It, it, is Riblet, or maybe I shouldn't lead that way, but is, is there one of your update characters that is closest to the Bobby Moynihan reality? Because I do see some Riblet faces it's like there's the bobby moynihan face if that i mean they're all it's all just confident idiots i think (laughs) (laughs) and and i just if i may just say this one thing you 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 go on youtube and you go down these rabbit holes sometimes and i don't know who said this or whatever but i i've i've met i've retained this you don't want to read those comments usually because they're you know idiots half the time but somebody wrote true and this is out there and people uh, believe this. It's a new segment we're doing. And I quote, I've always thought of Bobby Moynihan as the unofficial emblem of SNL, which I just thought, I mean, you just have Is this. Is he the MJ? Like, you know how, like, the logo of the NBA? or was, what, It's like, are you the logo? <laughs> he just, but Bobby just should hear, like, he has this this love from, from the fan community that is, that is uh, sort of unparalleled. That's, that's, it's so good for me to hear that (laughs) it is crazy as a as a fan it's nuts like you you know like it's 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 the best it's also i'll talk to my therapist about it for a long time i should say by the way jerry west is the nba logo not not mj um but uh yes (laughs) but yeah you you definitely could be bobby for snl um all right i want to get to one of your other sketches that uh, i've been dying to talk to you about i completely disagree i go conehead toons is at least Yes, 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 100%. Uh, Coneheads, I can see for sure. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk to you about like the Fox and Friends cold opens uh, that you used to do those sketches that I thought was great that you did with um, oh, Vanessa yeah. and Taryn. I mean, those were some epic political, like modern day humor where you guys were so great. I think you, um, I think just there's so many elements of those sketches that worked really well, especially people talk about the end credits that would just roll and roll and roll. Oh. Um, 
those <laughs> things were fantastic. So um, would love to hear, you know, your role in those sketches and working with Taryn and Vanessa specifically. Um, thank you, first of all, for bringing them up. Number one, because now I know I will like watch them. Like I'll put my kids to bed and like watch a couple before I go to bed just because like those were like that like those like those live from New York's with Taryn and Vanessa are like that's SNL like that's like holy shit man holy shit <laughs> like this is our job like it was it was th- those were like this sweet sweet pocket of like this is just we're here to do what we do and that's have fun and be funny with some really funny people and like it was like th- like I think we gained some pretty good will with those sketches and like Seth, I think they were Seth and Brian Tucker, but I, I'm pretty sure Christine Nangle had like a lot to do with those. The, 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 I think everyone pitched in the, the, the final scroll, but Nangle had a lot to do with, with all of it. Um, I, I wish I, I wish I was better and had a better mind of, about it, about SNL, but I was a huge fan for many years and then got there and lost my mind. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's totally fair. Um for you, how did it feel? Like were you a big were you into politics before you were a cast member and then how was that for you to then go and play political figures once you're on the show? I think I was more into politics after I got the show. I I remember like the first guy I played was like Peter King and I was like, Ooh, I don't know who this dude is. Uh I played like Newt Gingrich like 10 times or something like that and I think like I spoke once. Um, which was good because like, I'm, I'm still not positive who he is like, but like other, other than that, like I, but I, no, I, be, I, I definitely learned and became a lot more political after I got on the show <laughs> beforehand. I was just trying, like I was doing improv under a grocery store. Yeah. That is interesting. Cause when you're watching the show, you do, you like, as a fan, you feel like everybody really like fully grasps all the political impressions. Uh, but then if you don't come onto the show and you're not like very into politics and they're like, Hey, you got to play this guy. It, it's only translates at a certain point. I, I also like, I don't necessarily think like any of my, like I didn't, I didn't like there. I got lucky with a few impressions, like, like loud Italians or loud fun, like Guy Fieri, Snooky was more like vibes than impressions, and 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 like they would be like, "You're gonna be Rob Ford," and I was like, "I'm gonna be a crazy crack addict." Got it. Like <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like an imp- like Jay Farrow or like Phil, you know, Hartman or Cecily or Taron, like you know, like these mimics, like you know, like uh, who could just do any impression. Like I feel like I I got I got away on ninety percent costume and ten percent charm. It is so, so interesting to hear you talk about doing those Fox and Friends, you know, putting your kids to bed, watching, oh, the watching them, you know, doing the uh, live from New York, sort of a production thing. So tell us, you know, we've been, each of us have, you know, seen the show, being in the studio and just seeing, you know, the band is playing and, you know, you're, you're getting ready and, you know, five seconds, you know, all that stuff. Talk us, you know, the cold open when you're when you're a part of the cold open, that's that's probably, you know, feels pretty special. I think a lot of times they do those that on home base. Can you just tell us a little bit about that adrenaline push? Yeah, it's crazy that you say that like Fox and Friends. I'll, I'll never like the second you said that I went like dude, Fox and Friends had the best couch. It was so comfy. <laughs> it was round. It was just like this perfect couch and i just remember every time we did it like feeling com- feeling physically comfortable and like sitting next to vanessa and taryn right before we were starting and just being like this is going to be a blast like we got like we're all excited to do this we're such nerds and like taryn is somebody who loves to really enjoy the moment and really get you psyched up really well and vanessa is like you just know you're in good hands and the sketches were great and uh what i remember was like yeah like like we gained people liked them and we got to do them more and more so they let us do crazier things so all of a sudden those like big props where i was like drinking out of weird like you know giant cups and like hiding sandwiches <laughs> like it was like it got it got insane and also like 
Oh, Brian kill me the worst, like just the worst. Bobby, you talk, you know, you talked about Taryn Killam and Vanessa, and you guys really anchored that. And you talked about having that moment where you're like, this is our job and we're here. Is it made more special when you look around? It's like you came in to a cast filled with some incredible all time cast members and obviously you working with comedy legends coming in. But is it different when you look around to people that came in relatively around the same time as you or after you and kind of look around and be like, wow, we're making this now? No, I never got there. It, it felt like like it was like I came in with Amy and Daryl and Kristen and like Mike Shoemaker was still like all these guys were still there. like, you know, it was like it was a different place. And then by the time I left, I was just like, wow, this felt yeah, very different. Like <laughs> it was I, I it, it 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 I feel like I saw a very I saw I came in at one place and saw it change into another almost. I don't know if I answered the question or if I went off on it. It was in a different place at a deep, perfect. dark SNL closet. Yeah. I'm, yeah. <laughs> um, and then, I mean, I have been, uh, I actually drove up to Canada to knock on John's door um, because I have wanted to talk about Star Wars stuff and just specifically oh, knock on John whose door. Uh, John Schneider, he hosts the... Uh, oh, she's, sorry, sorry. I, I was like, trying to figure out... It was like someone in Star Wars? I was like, uh, like, no, just John, knew... John Williams? <laughs> I have knocked on his door. He has too. been I'm asking me for to... years. So I'll, I'll, I'll take over for a second, Haskell. I'll say that uh, when Haskell first joined the podcast back in 2020, his one request was, one day I want to talk to Bobby Moynihan about SNL and Star Wars. And I said... Buddy, I'll make it happen. <laughs> We're yeah, I mean, yeah. we'll we'll set aside some some other time if you wish. I I, I would love to. Absolutely, yeah. I and you know, John charged me fifty dollars a month and for four years, <laughs> and it finally. But specifically, when we talk about something <laughs> like Star Wars or like a big IP, like what is it like pitching? Do you know? Like, I can't I can't pitch a big Star Wars sketch too many times in a year because the the costume and the set design. Or like, is it like, I like Star Wars. Uh, if, if I have the chance to write something, I'm going to write something. There was like, I, I I think more what it was, was like, what dictated it was demand. It was like, we got lucky. Me and Taryn were fans. Probably only me and Taryn and like the crew and like, <laughs> like uh, set design and like stuff like that. But, uh, um, the movies came back out like you know it was like force away like we got lucky when like force awakens and like like stuff like that came came back out or around and like we had to have a reason to do it but there was like a year and a half where me and taryn were cooking and and got a couple on it was like the star wars uh sorry the force awakens auditions uh the 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 trailer where we had james franco as as Mark Hamill and Taryn was Han Solo and I was Leia. There was that one. There was <laughs> the um the action figures. A whole bunch. Action figures, Matt, the radar technician. We did like a whole bunch. Is there any that you were like, oh, I wish we got that one on? Because that Star Wars oh, fans many. loved it. Many and there was definitely a time where they were like, no more Star Wars. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, uh, I think one one that we pitched to Adam Driver was me and Taryn were. Oh, it was awful. Uh, me and Taryn, it was totally my idea. Uh, me and Taryn were um, stormtroopers with mops, and we were mopping up, and we were like, "Well, we're done for the night." Uh, man, like long day of mopping. <laughs> and then you just heard no or you heard the fight between Kylo and Han Solo and then you heard no and just Han Solo's body fell and hit the ground and exploded everywhere and we were like oh we just we just <laughs> cleaned this and like that and like uh 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 Adam Driver was like no <laughs> He's like no no, he was like, people are mad at me for killing Han Solo already. No. 
<laughs> it was like not even thought about for a second. <laughs> that has to be one of the worst veto stories I've heard in a long time. That is an amazing sketch idea. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a robot chicken sketch. <laughs> like, you know, like I think that's where it belongs. Uh, Lauren was like, I don't understand. Like, Han, who, like, uh, what, what is it? Like, uh, <laughs> um, I think, uh, what was it? Was there? Oh, I'm sure. Oh, I definitely wrote one for. <laughs> That's crazy. I wrote one for Tina Fey when Tina Fey hosted where she was Princess Leia and the whole joke. This too, like this should have been a robot chicken sketch. It probably was and I didn't even research it. Was uh Tina was uh she unfroze Han Solo and she was like he was like thank you for you know like that scene, you know, in Jabba's palace. I was Job of the Hut, by the way. Or, no, Bill was Job of the Hut. I was Bib for Tuna because I wanted to just be in the. I just wanted to be in the makeup, uh, and uh, the whole joke was she just kept going. You know, oh, you know, huh? Because he said I. The last thing that he said to her was, "I know." Like she went, "I love you," and he went, "I know," and she just kept going, like, "Oh, I know." And he was like, "How did you get here?" And she was like, "I, I know, I know." <laughs> And she was all pissed off. And, like, Tina liked it, but was like, there needs to be more. And, like, she kind of, like, talked to me about it. It was really sweet about it. But it was a big swing, and there was a job of the Hut puppet, and there was no way it was fucking happening. <laughs> I, um, I, I love I'm, it. I'm sure there's many more. Yeah, question for you, Bobby. Uh, you know, speaking of the uh, Han Solo stuff, did, was there any ever push to get Harrison Ford to host the show? God, I don't think I ever heard that. I don't think it ever, like, I don't re- that doesn't ring a bell on anything. Yeah, that would like, be. I, re- I remember at one point, like trying for Brad Pitt and Will Smith, and like those were the two big white whale kind of things. But like, I don't remember anything about Harrison Ford ever. Kind of. All right. I have to jump out of SNL for just one second to uh, Star Wars nerd out. But Bobby, you are in like the Star Wars universe now. Right? You have done voice work for uh, Resistance and stuff like that. Like, what was that like? Like to to step into the Star Wars universe. Does that match up to being a lifelong SNL fan and making getting onto SNL? Or yeah, it's 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 two different things. It's funny. It's it's funny you say that. Like, I have two instances of like memorable stage fright in in history or not or like in recent history and one of them for some reason not stage fright but just being like wildly aware of what i was doing in the moment and one of them was like the be like my eighth episode of snl the beyonce sketch like just being like oh my god like what is happening right now like like just having a moment of just like oh, like <laughs> and the other one is uh doing for some doing the voice of a stormtrooper on resistance like i just like my heart started pounding like i was like <clears throat> i'm sorry i was like are we are we rolling are we rolling okay <clears throat> okay we're, we're having trouble with the right i'm like okay like trying like and just being like what's happening to me like why am i so scared and it was like i think it was just like i it was just nuts i couldn't believe like that i was being paid on a tuesday afternoon to go do this for shits and giggles like it was it was nuts it was it still is it's crazy all right now we're going to talk about lost no i i, I want to but we're but we're uh uh that's another topic i, I know you love it uh, I, I do, do. i do too are you going to go to the lost concert that they're doing uh in april out there in hawaii I just talked, you know, Patrick Cotner. I just talked to Patrick Cotner about go. I and Michael Giacchino. I just had dinner with him. I want to go so bad. We'll we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully, that would be awesome. I love that music. Michael writes some great oh, stuff. Um, the greatest. Uh, with Bobby sitting down here, this one is always strikes me as just so unusual and ends very dark, uh, but still funny. Birthday Clown, uh, the pre-tape with Louis C.K. <laughs> what? Uh, America's favorite. Yes. How did, how did that come to be? Did you uh, help in writing that? No. I th- I think that, from what I remember, that was one of those, like, gifts. Like, or just, like, like, like Nick. 
it was like the Britannic guys like just came to me with this thing. And I was like, this is a dream. Thank you. And we went and shot it. And it was like, hopefully that'll air. And like, that's one that like shows up. And I, I just, I just remember doing that final shot with Louie <laughs> very naturally where it was like, we did it once where it was just like, yeah, no, he was going to chop you up into little pieces. It was like, yeah, no, that's super right. And we did it once, and, and Louie was just like, we're done. That was great. This one this one was great, guys. This one was real fun. And I just remember being like, oh, thank God. Oh, thank God Louis C.K. likes me at the time. And, well, yeah. Yeah. but, and, and there's some real acting chops in that one, I think, too, because, you know, you're, you're just how, how you come in and you're, you know, okay, so where's the kids? Where's the little, little guy? You guys are talking about sports or something that's on the TV. Um, so it seems so real, but. It's also sad and dark. <laughs> oh, it's 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 just the worst. Uh, yeah, it was. In, it's insane. The pissing, the pissing, watching while pissing is the most demeaning, and <laughs> it's amazing. It's it makes me laugh to no yeah. end. Yeah. to no end. It's uh, it's fantastic from start to finish. Got to ask you about a sketch that I don't know if you've been asked about too much, which is your your last sketch that you were in as a cast member, the senior skit sketch um i would love to know about you know what went into that one we didn't get to cover it last time about you know some people get goodbye sketches you guys got like a little bit of a group goodbye since there were a few of you leaving so how did that one come together and what did it feel like uh i remember there was like kind of no talk of a goodbye like of a like a like a like okay this is gonna be it was me vanessa and sashir there was no real talk of like a goodbye but it was like there was like a couple like Sashir, Vanessa, Bobby heavy sketches. We were very heavy that night. And uh, uh, I think I had a drunk uncle. I was so sick. I was so sick for my final show. Um, but uh, hmm. uh, that last sketch, I, I believe, wasn't the last sketch of the night at Dress. And then it kind of became like our final sketch. And we realized like, like we were doing this school thing. Maybe I might be mangling that completely. Maybe it was the last sketch of the night. All I remember was I do remember uh, it being long and we, well, we had to like cut it. We had to like cut some lines mid sketch, which doesn't happen often. And I just remember thinking like, can't even relax on your last one. Like, and kind, but in kind of like enjoying it and being like, this is chaos. I got a Deadpool mask on. Bye. Like, <laughs> and it being fun and, and having a, having a, having a, a good farewell. So it wasn't written as your last sketch originally, but it ended up becoming your last sketch. So do you look back on it with any extra fondness because of that? I mean, sure. I, in, in, in the, in the sense, in the sense of like the same reason why I love your guys' stuff with stats, just because like that as a fan of the show was always like fascinating to me, uh, that kind of stuff. And uh, in that sense, but like there was definitely the, 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 there were definitely moments from that show that I remember more now in retrospect. And do you remember who wrote that sketch? I don't. I don't. I'm not even positive. I just remember wearing a Deadpool mask. I don't even remember what the sketch was. Yeah, the la um, the final sketch. I remember like at some point, like me and Vanessa, like I put on a thing and said something about chimichangas. I think. <laughs> right. I think. Going into and, that episode, did you view getting drunk Uncle on as your sort of farewell? Or did you, were you just not even, were you thinking, I'm, I'm going to wrap up? Yeah, or? I guess I didn't, I didn't think like there, it wasn't like, like Kristen had a very big farewell, but like Kate hadn't left yet. And like a couple other, like there hadn't been like a lot of big farewells yet or, or, or like things like it wasn't like a common, it was less common, I would say. Yeah. It feels like after that season where like, Bill and Fred and all them left. We did kind of get a break between like official like farewells. And I, I as a fan remember thinking back at that time, 
like I'm pretty sure we had known I don't I don't remember how it was reported or not but like we knew you were leaving the show and I remember thinking like Bobby Moynihan is somebody that needs to get a farewell sketch so I think as fans we all looked at that sketch like this was definitely written as some sort of farewell it it yeah, I guess it did. I ha- I ha- that's I I feel unprepared and attacked, frankly. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I, I yes, that's that's what we're doing I, uh, here. Uh, I I I I I would I would love to see it again and go like, oh yeah, now I remember. It was wonderful. I just remember it being fun, and Beck and Kyle were in it, and I was super happy about that because I love them. I just had uh, dinner with Beck and Kyle like a week ago, like um. The best. That's what I remember. Like I remember them and Vanessa and it going well and not talking to my therapist about it years later. <laughs> How did that go thing. with with Beck and Kyle? Because um, oh, awful. You, Don't I? We, no. I I can only imagine <laughs> because, <laughs> because I I think that uh, you know after you left the show there was you know the talk was like when are we going to see Bobby back on the show? Obviously you popped up last year for for that episode and then I think people have been asking for Beck for a while now about if will Beck Bennett ever return to the show? So any any does he want to come back at some point? Uh, oh God! I wish I could remember the name. Something Simon. The, the, the that sketch is on my final episode. Uh, I think Mikey and Streeter wrote it. Who some? It was like a pre-tape where it was all these rappers. And oh, I was yeah. Skiffle. Yeah, uh, Skiffle. Yeah, Simon. Uh, da, 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 da. Who, yeah. Beck was dressed as Dick Tracy. Something simply Simon or something. Holy shit! That's my favorite. Essentially thing Simon. Ever done. Essentially, Essentially Simon. Simon. Yes. Oh. I love essentially Simon. I love him so much. I completely forgot his name. <laughs> yeah. So, wh- 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 why were you bringing up that sketch? Uh, I just sorry. I was just saying Beck Bennett. That's my. I want him to come back and, and host and do the monologue as essentially Simon the entire okay. show only as that character. <laughs> Um, yeah, <laughs> that's where no. David Pump- David Pumpkins has a has a, a bit at the very end of it, right? Oh yes. yeah, it's David, David like Pimpkins. Yes, Pimpkins. Yeah, he's got guns, physical handguns. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just quickly, how was that season thirty nine where you had the big cast turnover and then you have guys like Beck and Kyle come in and it really felt like a new print on the show and it was like you and, and Taryn and Jay Farrow were there, but there was a lot of new cast members putting their own spin on the show. I mean absolutely fantastic like you know like it was like that 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 crew was like gaining like beck and kyle and 80 and tim and cecily like it was like are you kidding like it was it was like having a a new murderer's row show up it was the best it was it was it was the greatest it was like that that's when uh, that's when like i remember it being I feel like that was sort of my class kind of like I got there with Amy, Tina and I saw, I got to be there for Kristen and Bill and Fred and Jason and Andy and everybody, like everybody like with Forte. Uh, and then, but I, I, I feel more connected to like that, that like me, Jay, Paul Britton, Vanessa, like that kind of Paul Brooks, that kind of era. Interesting. I don't know. Uh, that's fascinating. So, Bobby, on the podcast in the fall, I did think I answer made... your question at all? Hundred percent. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, no. total problem. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So, I appreciate it. It's late. I have two, so many children. Two. It's not a lot. <laughs> a lot. It's not a lot. I'm a complainer. Uh, Bobby, I wanted to ask you. So, in the fall, we did this cast member countdown where we asked uh, all of the social media followers yeah. and listeners of the podcast to vote on who they think the greatest cast members of all time are. And I know that you know Rolling Stone wants it a ranking, but we're like, you know, we we got to get the experts in here to to figure out who's really legit. And you came up pretty high. You were within the top thirty, and and you were you know smack dab uh, up there in the conversation. So. Uh, one of the debates we did end up having was the SNL GOAT debate, like who the greatest cast member of all time was. And I did have Haskell on with me for that show where we revealed the top three. And we had a very large debate between is it Phil Hartman or is it Will Ferrell? The fans actually voted for Bill Hader. So those are your top three. And I want to know, do you have a, a pick here for who the greatest cast member of all time might be? 
I mean, totally. First of all, that list put me in therapy for what? No, I'm just I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm I'm totally kidding. I I won a hundred. I was like I was like, phew! This is exactly where I think I should be. Um, <laughs> for mentally, I I went like, thank God, I, this is exactly where I would have put me. Um, yeah, you were but, at thirty one like, on that list. Yeah, you think I don't know? Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 I. Uh, I, I I remember looking at it and seeing those and being like, as a fan, being like, yeah, like when Bill got it being like, cool, like, yeah, like, you're right. Like, totally feeling like, oh, my God, like, yeah, like you all like, I think like there was. You also it's it's also for me as a fan, like I probably spent 10 years going like it's definitely Will Ferrell. You know, mm-hmm. or like then, like I'm old enough now where I had 10 years where it was somebody and then it was somebody else. Like you go like, well, Kristen Wiig, man, like Kristen's a champion. And then you go like, then I have my, you know, like my phase now where I'm like, it's Tina. Tina's like the the queen. Like she's the one that holds it all together in the end. Like, or Seth, like, you know, like one of those guys, like Amy. Kate, excessively, you know, like like all of those people that you said, like completely. Yeah, it's hard to parse. Phil Hartman through. is like, is like, oh, like Phil, sorry, Phil Hartman, like coin. I feel like coined the term glue, so it's hard to put him first. I can see where like he could easily come in second, but like, <laughs> but like he would go first too, of course. Just as yeah, nerd I, as a nerd goes. <laughs> no, this is great because this is like the type of conversation that I, I want to see when Haskell and I were debating this with the, with our other friend Bill Kenny on the show. Um, I, I wish I had like somebody like you there to just give your input on it all because um, statistically, like Phil Hartman was in the most sketches ever per episode. Like it was just like the man was doing like the, the workload per night was insane. But then Will Ferrell's hit rate was so high. And then in comes Bill Hader, who like redefines the show for a generation along with Kristen Wiig. And like those end up being a Mount Rushmore that's very solid for a lot of people, um, let alone Eddie Murphy, Amy Poehler, Tina Fey, all the people you're talking about. So I just think as a an outsider, it's fascinating to talk about. I could only imagine what somebody who got to witness some of these things in the real time would think about how to parse through these people. I I would love to have said that I like I have sat down and made a ten person Mount Rushmore in my mind consisting of Keenan and blank and blank and but you know and and listing it and then going through the awful process of whittling that down to a top three would be insane, but I haven't gotten that far. But I did. I mean, like. I did this podcast before I follow, like I do find the stats stuff interesting and I do follow it and it's impossible not to see it when you look at stuff. And I went like, Oh man, like, yeah, like, thank God. Thank God. That's, that's where I came in. Like the kindest, the kindest, like, and also like I was on SNL. That's that's, that's insane. (laughs) It was crazy to me. We need those sweet Rolling Stone headlines, so we're actually going to need you to give us your top ten worst, <laughs> so that we can grab yeah. some of those headlines. Uh, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, that as that Rolling Stone SNL one is ridiculous. Yeah, everybody has a Lauren impression, or most people do, and we've heard yours a couple of times. And and you're so great with your memory and your in your stories recollection. Uh, shared a couple insights on Lauren here. So just wanted to ask uh, whether it's a a funny uh, interaction or just maybe even a, a more a motivational or, or a from the heart sincere. Uh, what's one of your, would you mind sharing a, a Lauren memory that is, uh, wow. that you have with the, with, with the two of you? Um, I mean, I the first five that came to mind, I will tell you all off air. <laughs> like it's sure. like that's like just be, but like weirdly, just because it's like, yeah, I, I, I yeah, but yeah. like <laughs> I don't mean to put you on the spot either, uh, but just I also I don't mean to be cryptic and and or, no. or whatever either, but like yeah, I mean hundreds, like I I definitely. I have a weird moment of, of of remembrance of like running up to him at an after party with a couple in me and being like, I'm having a kid. <laughs> <laughs> like, like when I found out when I found out and him like being like taking like a very, very tender moment and like taking me by the shoulders and giving me his time for a moment 
at an after party and going like and saying something extremely dry and funny. I believe he said something along those lines like, congratulations, I'm definitely the first one that should know. I think that's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure that's what he said. And he was, but then he, but then he was like, he was like, congratulations, Bobby. And he was like, really cool about it. But like, that's just, that just popped into my head when you said it. Like, uh, also my favorite story in the world. I don't know if I ever told this, this is going to kill me, but this is like my favorite thing in the world, which is my first kid was born. And like, he called and said, congratulations. And, uh, 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 five minutes later a knock on my door in california and someone's there with roses and a box and i was like oh my gosh like ooh!" and uh, <laughs> i open it up and uh it's uh, a glass bowl with the date my daughter was born and the name penelope and my daughter's name is not penelope uh, and it's my favorite. It's my favorite piece of it's my favorite piece of th- glass that i own i love it with all my heart <laughs> yeah um that is that is great this is great fantastic story so thank you it's for best. sharing with us bobby best. yeah um honestly hanging out with you is it's like hanging out with a friend just seriously just getting to like shoot the shit and talk about snl so i really appreciate the time today can't wait till we get to see you on the show again someday soon whether it's on the uh you know the show as, re- as a regular cameo maybe a host but definitely at snl 50 we look forward to it so That'll God, be great. Yeah, hope we'll, we'll see. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for letting me uh, talk about it. It's fun. To, it's fun to go back and remember. Absolutely. Uh, so, tell us what you're up to right now. Anything you'd like to plug to the SNL fans? Um. Uh. Sure. I got a podcast. Uh. Com. Uh, CBB World. Uh, dot com. Comedy Bang Bang. Uh. uh called. Uh. Who Me with the Batman. Uh, I play Batman and I interview people. Um, from the uh, 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 Batman universe. <laughs> it's insane. Um, I got a, a children's book out, uh, out called Not All Sheep Are Boring. You can check it out in uh, on the computer and anywhere books are sold. Great book. Great um, book. Thanks, yeah. Got a couple got of books. Here. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Oh, very. Where's Waldo? There it is. I'm tr- <laughs> I can't believe I didn't see that until now. I'm disappointed. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm in the movie If coming out. Uh, Unfrosted coming out on Netflix in May. Both of those, Inside Out Two is coming out in June. Check it out. Um, also, I'll be uh, at your house, John, in about ten minutes. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, yeah. y- you heard that right. Bobby's uh, working away, so you got to check out all of his projects that he has coming up. Yeah. So uh, a lot of fun stuff happening up here on the Saturday Night Network. If you are enjoying our content, you got to give us a thumbs up. You have to subscribe on YouTube, Apple Podcasts and Spotify so you never miss a show and make sure to follow us on all social platforms at the SNL Network on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok and X. And we have a lot of fun stuff. Bobby uh, follows us and likes our stuff every now and then. So you could be just like Bobby and check check out our content. So uh, definitely do that. We've had some great SNL stories. In addition to Bobby recently, we just spoke to Christine Ebersol. So that one is up now and she was a season seven cast member. So yeah, so that's, uh, that's really, really fun that we had her on. And of course, we're going to be back later on this week to cover the Rami Youssef episode of Saturday Night Live. Uh, that should be a lot of fun. And then we got Bobby's old friend Kristen Wiig returning for her five timers moments the week after. Bobby, you excited for Kristen to come back? Oh, yay. I didn't realize there was her five timers. Oh, yay. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, I can't wait. How was Christine Ebersole? I can't wait to hear that. Uh, that she was, was uh, she was great. Yeah, honestly, it was it was a long time ago for her on the show, but it was great to get to talk to her. Yeah, so yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. she's she sings a little bit, so that that's the that's Ooh, the best part. Well, yeah, she's she's so sweet, so sweet. Fine. Yeah, that, that's a good one. So you got you to gotta check that one out. So we got uh, Rami Youssef, we got Kristen Wiig and Ryan Gosling all coming up over the next few weeks. Nonstop coverage here with the Hot Take Shows, Roundtables, and By the Numbers. So uh, make sure to check out all of the shows. James, thank you for joining us today. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you, John and uh, Haskell and Bobby and Penelope. It's been great. Yep. Haskell, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Haskell, thank you as well. Appreciate you. Hope you had fun. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, like, share, and subscribe this one so we can get Bobby to come back and talk Star Wars only. It's going to be so much fun. Uh, please follow me, Andrew E. Haskell, stand updates all over New England. Absolutely. Check us out at, check us out at Bibby and Haskell Talk Stewies <laughs> and our new podcast about Star Wars. It's very dumb. Check it out. Absolutely. You got to check that out. All right, guys, on behalf of James Haskell and Bobby Monahan, we will see you next time. Have a good one. Mm-hmm.